And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and, and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with, with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Uh, according to National Institute of Mental Health in, in America, a 74% uh, of people suffer from speech anxiety. Okay. Uh, 73 for men, 75 for women. 5.3 million Americans have a, a social phobia. 3.2 million Americans have a fear of crowded public uh, place. Uh, public speaking is the greatest fear that people uh, have, even greater than the spider and the death itself. So, you know, fear of speaking, fear of public speaking, you know, glossophobia is, is pretty serious. Uh, you know, I think I used to have this fear of uh, speaking in, in public. Um, I used to have this this anxiety, um, you know, I, was, I got really nervous, you know, getting sweaty and getting dizzy whenever I speak in, in front of a large uh, crowd. Uh, I was not shy. Uh, I have never been a shy guy, but you know, that was not my character. But when it comes to speaking in front of people, you know, all of a sudden I, I just become so shy and introverted and, you know, like, it's like so uh, disoriented. And, and because of this phobia, I, I thought being a pastor was not my, my thing. It, it was not my option. Because pastors, we need to speak a lot in front of people all the time. You know, we deliver messages, sermon, uh, we teach the word of God uh, to people uh, in public. Um, so it was, it, was, it was like, you know, being a pastor was not my, my, my option. I never really thought about it until like uh, later years. But when I was young, never thought about it because of this this issue. But there are there are people in this world who do not have any issues with speaking, um, and 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 actually they love to speak in front of people. Like they love to talk in public. It's just naturally like that. You know, they have this beautiful. Uh, talents of speech. Do you guys know anybody who's really good at speaking in, in, in public? You know, uh, those people who are really awesome, like, you know, they have this, I don't know, like very smooth talk, eloquent, logical, and persuasive. Um, and, and they are also uh, very, you know, like they, they're, they're witty and humorous. They they make people cry. They make they can make people laugh. Uh, and I used to envy those people. You know, I I, I you know I wish you know I, I could have this kind of talents. Talents of speech has been my prayer. Um, has been my prayer for many many years. And some of you guys might have this talent of. Uh, speech as your uh, prayer request as well, especially those people who are going to this uh, field, like career, that involves a lot of uh, public speech, teachers, professors, journalists, uh, politicians, pastors, CEOs, lawyers, actors, and the list goes on. Now, a lot of jobs are involved with public speech. A lot of people uh, they, they want to have this talent of speech. Um, and, you know, this talent of speech is a powerful thing, a powerful talent. And, and a lot of people believe if we have this talent of speech, um, it will be more powerful. You know, we will be more influential. So a lot of people want to have this uh, talent of speech. Uh, but today's passage, Apostle Paul tells us that 
he's not really interested in having this tone of speech. Right? Just like last week, it, it's just weird. It's, it's, just go, it's, it's going against the norm. He's boasting on weakness in Christ instead of like boasting on those ability, capacity. But today as well, like he is speaking something so weird. And, you know, everybody wants to have this talent of speech. He's like, Paul is saying, like, I'm not, a, I'm not really interested in this. He said he did not come with eloquence or, or, or human wisdom. Uh, what is eloquence or human wisdom? Um, and, you know, we got to read. I mean, we got to know the context of this, this letter. You know, we all know this is Corinthians. And, uh, you know, this is epistle. This is a letter is written uh, for the people, the Christians in Corinth, the Corinthian church. But what we know about Corinth, I mean, we, we talked about uh, Corinthian church a number of times. Uh, and this, this Corinthian church has, has, has a lot of issue. But at the same time, we know there are a lot of people, they are influenced by this Greek culture. The Hellenization. In ancient Greek, right, they have, they have these philosophers, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. You know, they are coming from that background. See, like philosophers, they, they love to talk. They love to just like prove their, their point. They want to just, you know, verify. You know this this truth that they believe and 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 they want to just articulate that with with logic with articulated speech eloquence with human wisdom human knowledge so they have a heavy emphasis on on you know training people like rhetoric the stu study of speech and writing and it was essentially important for them but Paul, again, he is saying something very radically different, very contrasting uh, to this, this normal thing, normal standard. You know, he is resolved. He is determined to know nothing. While, I, you know, I, while he was with, with the Corinthian church, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. See, he doesn't want to rely on the talent of speech. He thinks, right? He believes if he preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ with this eloquence or, or, and, and, and human knowledge, if we rely on them explaining the gospel of Jesus Christ, it can be a problem for him. The message of the gospel, right? That Jesus and he's, you know, he being crucified and, and buried and died and, and, and resurrected, the whole, the gospel story, the message of the Jesus Christ will be obscured and diluted. And that was his concern. So when Paul preaches the gospel at Corinthian church, he resolved, he determined to stick with just sharing the simple gospel of Jesus Christ, just the gospel, nothing added up. So think about it in, in, in that context, the cultural context that they're heavily emphasizing on eloquence, the rhetoric, the way you speak, the way you convey uh, your, 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 your ideas with, with your words. It was so big. And in the middle of that, that cultural context, you know, he is like saying, no, I'm not going to do that. But you guys probably know uh, Paul. Paul is and he's a, such an excellent speaker. Uh, if you read the book of Acts, um, Acts fourteen, so uh, Paul was speaking, uh, and he was chief speaker. He was main speaker, um, and people thought he was Hermes, you know, god of this you know, science, uh, speech, art, eloquence, and writing. He is God of speech. So people thought he was Hermes because he was so fluent. He was so articulated and he was so sophisticated and people like drawn into him and they thought, you know, you are like Hermes. You're awesome. You're making sense. Everything that you say, it's, it's good.
he had a talent of speech. And he'd been using this talent of speech for many, many times. You know, talent of speech and talent of talent of his his writing. He 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 used his talents, you know, for evangelism, for for spreading the gospel. And and if you think about it, isn't it what we're supposed to do as a Christian? And 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 Paul said this, like you know, if you do anything, right, do whatever you do, you know, drink or or eat, you know, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. So that that implies that meaning, right? Whatever you do, like whatever the talents that you have, you just do it for the glory of God. You do it for the kingdom of God. And with the talent, the given talent that, that, that Paul has from God, he's been using this for, for evangelism. And, and that is a wonderful thing. And Paul himself actually encourages us to have that. But all of a sudden, at, at this point, and Paul is saying, you know what? I'm not going to use these talents anymore. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not using this, this ability that I have, the talent of speech, eloquency, the knowledge that I have. You know, I determined not using them. I'm just focusing on the gospel. All of a sudden, he makes that decision. And there's a couple of reasons, actually. Apostle Paul arrived in a city called Athens before coming to Corinthian church. Now, you know, Athens, right? Nowadays, it's the capital city of Greece today. In Athens, Paul uses this, this talent of speech. You know, he is having a debate, you know, with, with other people, like, you know, those people who are so into philosophies, those people who are so into this debating. So they are having this philosophical uh, discussion, arguments. And Paul actually used it very well. Paul tried to convince people. You know, Paul tried to explain the gospel of Jesus Christ using this eloquence, using this knowledge to the people in Athens. You know, brilliant rhetoric, brilliant speech. So that's one of his major evangelism strategy. However, the whole strategy, whole plan, it just... It was just complete failure. Right before coming to Corinth, he experienced it. So this experience made Paul convinced that he should, he should more focus on the gospel, more, more focus on Jesus Christ who died on the cross. And there's another um, the reason, explanation for this. Uh, when once he arrived in Corinth, one of the things that they were experiencing is that they were like uh, saying, you know, uh, you know, Paul is better, Apollo is better, or Peter is better, and they they had division, divided parties, and and the people were saying, you know, because you know Paul is you know you know is is really great on this, you know, mission, he is he's the one who planted this church. You know, he is he's really great. And, and Apollo, he is he's really great speaker. And, and we have to follow Apollo. And Peter, he is the, 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 the leader of this early church movement. So we have to follow him. So based on ability, based on their leadership, based on their uh, sermon style, that's the basically what uh, Paul is trying to say. But... And that we can relate this. Like I can relate this so much because whenever I speak, whenever I um, present the gospel, uh, whenever I, you know, uh, delivering the sermon, I, I sometimes I struggle because I told you that I, I, I had a phobia, glossophobia. I'm still struggling. And, 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 and on top of it, I have to speak in English, which is not my mother tongue. And I struggle, guys. Like, I have these worries in me, like anxiety. Oh, what, if they, what if they don't get it? What if they don't understand this? Because I have this phobia thing. So whenever I deliver the message, I just like, oh, man, like, I, need, I need to focus on explaining things. 
I need to do a lot of work and 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 just like you know make make things so so people can understand better. I think of this like oh I have to I have to really focus on explaining it, articulating myself. I I have to I have to present my uh this gospel very well, and and. There's, there's nothing wrong with it, I guess. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. And Paul is not trying to degrade that. Like, you know, we need to uh, put effort into this. We need to do our very best to, to explain things. And, and we have to understand the context. We have to understand their culture. We have to understand the, the language. That's what all the missionary is doing. However, the problem is we are so focused on, on that. That becomes our focal point, and that becomes our priority, and that that is a problem. And sometimes, you know, like students, you, you guys are saying, you know, I am going to work for, you know, for the glory of God. You know, see, like I have given this 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 talents. God given me this talents, the knowledge and education and all the skills that I have, beautiful, and I want to use it to glorify God. I want to use it for the kingdom of God. And, and you are start to uh, building up and, and, and developing and, and improving and, and you're practicing and, and you're doing so much doing that, which is great, wonderful, but that itself becoming bigger than God, bigger than Christ, bigger than the gospel itself, then, then it can be a problem. It's not about you. It's not about you doing all the work. See, it's about God. It's about Jesus Christ as the Holy Spirit leading us. And sometimes we, we confuse that order. And sometimes we think we can do this work of God with my ability, with my speech, with my ministry uh, people skill, my my you know, capacity, my talents. But if you think about it, it's something has to be changed. It's not about you. It's about him. It's not about me. It's about God. Talents, resources. You know, I have this money and, and, and beautiful talents, skills, but you are first. I'm not sticking. I'm not depending on it. It's a beautiful thing. I'm thankful that I have it. But they are not the one that I'm depending. I'm depending on you. I'm depending on you, God. So please help me. Even though I have so many resources, beautiful talents, powerful, charismatic talents, even though we have all that, if I if I don't rely on you, if I don't depend on you, I am doomed. I'm nothing. And that's the testimony that Paul is trying to make. Remember, guys, remind yourself, I'm nothing without God. I'm nothing without Christ. I'm nothing without the gospel of Jesus Christ.